Hey everyone, the Budget Nerd here again. Today we'll be checking out the H823H Plus Mini Drone from Snaptane. They sent it for review. So with my channel gaining a little traction, of which I am grateful, I get several offers these days to review products. I don't intend for this channel to turn into a review channel. I'm still into networking and all that. So rest assured that I will stick with products that fit the channel theme and that I'll be honest about each product I get. If it stinks, I'll tell you. If it's good, I'll tell you. So anyway, with that in mind, this mini drone here is a new version of their original mini drone. I believe the differences are the color, fewer colors on the controller, a removable battery, uh, an extra charging cable, and the inclusion of three batteries. You can snatch one up on Amazon for between $24 and $30. So let's check out the box and see what you get. It's all packaged pretty well. The drone itself is pretty small, smaller than the controller even. You can see the removable battery underneath, or at least where it goes. The controller uh, has the typical inexpensive plastic feel to it but, you know, not unexpected, and it feels solid. Here's a shot of what you get. You use that screwdriver to replace the blades. The third battery is already installed in the drone, that's why you only see two. And the batteries are one cell, 300 milliamp hour LiPos. So just like any new toy that runs on direct current, plug everything in and get it charged. The controller needs three AAAs, so this is a four axis drone. So forward on the left stick will raise it into the air. Left or right on the left stick or yaw will turn it left or right. Up or down on the right stick will make it move forward or backward. And left or right on the right stick will make it slide to the left or right. It's a pretty common controller scheme for a four axis flyer. To get it working, turn on the drone, then the controller. To pair it, which you need to do every time you turn it on. You press up on the left joystick, it'll beep, and then down, it'll beep again. Now it's paired, so next you need to calibrate it. You hold both sticks to the lower left corner and hold for a second. The drone will beep, and the light on the drone will stop flashing. At this point, you're ready to go. So you can take off in one of two ways, auto takeoff or manual. To auto take off, press the left shoulder button. It's really that simple. To have it land, press the same button again. So to manually take off, you need to hold the joysticks down in opposite corners to arm it. Its propellers will spin slowly, and then you can press up on the left joystick to get altitude. So it's meant to be flown indoors, but you could take it outside as long as there's no wind. I took it outside just to check it out in a light breeze, and then my kids tried it out. So check out some of that footage. So turn on the controller, push up, down, calibrate it, let's put it on rate three, and let's see how it does. Whoa! <laughs> it definitely gets blown around in the wind a little bit. But it's flyable as long as it's not too bad. Alright, so that's it full blast forward against the wind. So you're dealing with a light breeze at best. Yeah, it just can't move forward. I mean, to be fair, it's not meant to be flown in the wind. <coughs> I just wanted to see how it would do. But if there's no wind, it can definitely be flown outside. Whoa! 
Yeah, that is full forward. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So I think when it starts to flash like that, um, it probably wants another calibration, I think. So when I do this, calibrate it, it stops. So I think if it takes a tumble, that's what it's doing. It's supposed to hold up and down. What is that it? should do it. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Move it backwards. Push the right joint. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Move it to the left so it'll get away from the wall. There you go. There you go. You might, you might be able to do a flip now. Try flip. There you go. So my daughter liked the auto land, the flips and the takeoff function, and she would press the auto land like nobody's business when she thought she was nearing peril. She also said her favorite thing about it was how it would hover there, which gave her time to go to the potty. My son also took a shot at it. Yeah, now it's ready to go. Wow. Hey, brother, how are you trying to do a flip? Oh, too close to the ceiling. The left joystick down. Here, do a few more. Hey, I'll just keep doing them, trying to get it in shot. Whoa! <laughs> Easy there. So my son's a little older, and he was able to figure it out quickly, and even started doing some tricks. He also liked the flips and the auto land. I even gave the cat a chance to review it, and, well, her input was inconclusive. Checking out the controller again, let's look at some of the special things it'll do. This button will enable headless mode. In order for this to work, you have to start it facing away from you, which most people do, and then you have to stay in that same general area. It mostly works as long as everyone stays where it expects you to be. If you moved around at all in the room while flying it, the direction might be off, making it tough to use. The beeping it would do in headless mode was something I wish they would change. This button here is the return to home button. It's similar to the headless mode in that you have to start it facing away from you and stay in the same general area. It'll just go in the direction it came from and won't stop until you press the button again. Sometimes it would come back in my general direction and sometimes it wouldn't even be close. Neat, but really sort of gimmicky if you ask me. My guess is that there's a compass and an accelerometer in this thing, perhaps and it's doing the best it can with what little info it can gather. So clicking the left joystick changes the rates of speed. It's very methodical and slow in rate one, which is great for younger kids or if you're getting the hang of it. And in rate three, it's surprisingly fast for an indoor flyer. 
Clicking the right joystick would enable flip mode, and then moving the right joystick in a direction would make it flip in that direction. And this was far from gimmicky and worked very well. It was a lot of fun. These are just trims for the right joystick, and this button here didn't do anything. Everyone who flew this had a lot of fun with it. We used all the batteries and wanted to keep going. Said batteries lasted anywhere from 7.5 minutes to 9 minutes and 40 seconds. Charging them took around 45 to 55 minutes. Now, it's not all perfect scores, though. There are a few issues we had testing it. There is no throttle trim. It didn't drift up or down much, so not a big deal, but I would have liked to have seen that on the controller. It said it would hold its altitude, and sometimes it did, and sometimes it didn't. Auto takeoff sometimes would go a bit too high, so if you have low ceilings, it might hit them. Manual takeoff you have control over, and it's pretty easy. Sometimes when I would hit the auto land, it wouldn't do anything. I would press it again, and then sometimes it would work, and sometimes it would just drop from the sky. It didn't do it very often, but worth noting. Also, I kept pressing the auto land by mistake. A minor thing, but you don't want it landing in the wrong spot by accident. Maybe it was the tiny controller, maybe it was just me, I don't know. Another issue I had with it was once in a blue moon, when I would press up or down on the left stick to raise or lower it, it would yaw slightly. It was usually minimal, but it was a pain nonetheless. It seemed like another controller calibration would sort it out, though. Uh, the last issue I found was it would usually descend at a decent speed, but sometimes when we tried to get it to descend, it would go down really slowly, like it was trying to go up itself to finish some auto takeoff or something like that. If we forced it long enough, it would just stop and drop from the sky. This also happened only occasionally. All of these issues are pretty minor, but I wanted to make sure you all got the whole picture. Oh. It's very durable. In fact, I purposely ran it into the wall as fast as I could, and it just bounced off and sometimes would even recover. My kids crashed it many times, and it was fine. Despite a few minor issues, it's a lot of fun, and I would recommend it still. Everyone who flew it had a lot of fun. So there's a link in the description if you're wanting to grab one. Thanks for watching.